What's going on, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer and Tyler Horka back on the Blue and Gold YouTube channel with a Monday Notre Dame football update, taking some of the latest developments in the world of fighting Irish football. And Notre Dame does have a couple of staff additions that we're going to talk about in this video. And before we dive into it, of course, hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to our channel for more content. And as always, go to blueandgold.com for much more fighting Irish info. So two analysts are the additions uh, that we're going to talk about today. This um, this one right here was from uh, just, I, I believe, Friday this was. LSU senior offensive analyst Trent Miles joining um, the staff, looks like. Um, he's someone who actually has coached at Notre Dame before from 2000 uh, to 2004 um, under Tyron Willingham as the receivers coach. And uh, Miles worked with Mike Denbrock at LSU. So, what what else can you tell us about uh, the, this pickup for the Irish? Yeah, it's what you just said there in the last line. The fact that he's worked with Mike Denbrock, I think that's what this is about. Anytime you get a new offensive coordinator, you obviously want to surround that guy, even if it is Mike Denbrock, who is on one of his later stops in his career. Let, let's be honest, this guy's on the back half of his career. Uh, he might want to finish his career at Notre Dame for all we know. You want to surround that guy with guys that he's comfortable working with, comfortable working around. And like you said, there's also the aspect of it that uh, his time, Trent Miles, in coaching football goes back quite a ways, all the way back to Notre Dame uh, during the Tyrone Willingham days. So uh, that's a when, when you want a senior analyst, someone who's helping your offensive coordinator directly, you want someone with knowledge of the program, but then you also want someone with knowledge uh, that dates back a couple decades in the coaching sphere. So I think that's a pretty good kind of behind the scenes mind for Mike Denbrock to be working around. Yeah. And then another one that was, this news just broke today, Notre Dame football adding a defensive, uh, adding a defensive analyst from Oklahoma state, Chris, uh, excuse me, Casey McHugh, uh, was according to his social media profile. Uh, you wrote the story. People can check it out at blueandgold.com. Tell us about uh, McHugh. Yeah, he's, an interesting one. Th this is not a guy whose coaching experience goes back to 2002 at Notre Dame like that of Trent, Smi Trent Miles. But like you said, Oklahoma State, so that's a 10-win program last year. They beat Texas A&M in the, in the Tax Act Bowl to get to 10 wins. But this is a guy with two engineering degrees. So uh, kind of we talk about 40 for 40 with Notre Dame, and that's for the student athletes. But obviously sometimes it applies to the coaches as well. You like to bring in knowledge, intelligence. I think McHugh – has that, um, obviously, with those couple of engineering degrees that I just alluded to. But it's also a guy that seems like he just really wants to kind of pop off in the coaching sphere. And we've seen that happen with Notre Dame. Like, Notre Dame is never going to be viewed as a stepping stone type of program. But if you're a guy like McHugh, who's on the younger side, I believe he just graduated undergrad in 2016. And then uh, he got an, um, a master's degree from Old Dominion, where he kind of busted his chops in the coaching ranks. He was a analyst there for three or four seasons. Notre Dame is kind of a place where you're like, okay, if I can just get in the door there and do some good things. Uh, we see it with analysts all the time, right, Mike? Some of these recruiting guys or uh, analysts who all of a sudden jump ship to, say, like a Central Michigan. And then after that, they're all of a sudden working for a Power 5 program. So I think that's kind of the trajectory that McHugh is on. And like I said, very intelligent guy. And, and this is a well-coached defense. And I think he's going to add to that. In terms of roster personnel notes, um, you know, Andrew Christophic not listed on the spring roster, nor was uh Gabriel Rubio defensive lineman. Um, Christophic, not really a surprise he had the extra year of eligibility. Um, but looks like he's not going to be taking it. You know, Notre Dame will, is pretty loaded on the interior of the offensive line, and then a uh, Gabriel Rubio kind of in a you know, seems like a, a holding pattern. I don't know if that's the right term, Tyler. We'll just kind of have to see what happens with Rubio. Unexpected one, though, and one that Notre Dame doesn't need. Now, obviously, we've been told at blueandgold.com that Rubio could be back for spring ball, and that would be best case scenario for Notre Dame, obviously, because you want him to get those reps. It's kind of crazy. We're at the point in Rubio's career already where he's not an underclassman or a younger guy that you're like, okay, he needs to practice, practice, practice. But he is a, a very important piece in terms of depth on that Notre Dame defensive line because you look at last year and you're getting both of those guys back, Howard Cross, Riley Mills, those are going to be your starters on the interior. But when you went to that next level, 
it was Gabriel Rubio when he was healthy. He battled a couple things, uh, but when he was healthy, he was that second line of defense in the interior, kind of coupled with Jason Yanye. And we saw Donovan Heinish quite a bit as well. It was really only those five guys in the interior of the Notre Dame defensive line. And you're getting Anye back as well. But if you're missing Rubio, all of a sudden you have to bump Heinish up into that secondary role in, in the worst case scenario that Gabriel Rubio is not playing football for Notre Dame in 2024. I think you see a lot of Donovan Heinish, but you want that five man rotation. So I'm just looking at the scholarship chart that we have here at blueandgold.com. Who is that fifth guy? Is Tyson Ford finally ready to make a jump as a junior? And then you're looking at a couple of guys with four years of eligibility left in Devin Houston and Sean Savellano. Savellano yep. You, you yep, would know Savellano. how to pronounce this. Savellano. That guy is a, is massive, by the way. Yeah. I was doing the article at blueandgold.com, heights and weights of every player for the 2024 spring roster. It's like a 339 pounder. So it's interesting to see what Al Washington does with him. But getting back to Rubio, the guy's experienced. Like I said, he's a depth piece. So interesting situation for him. But of Christophic and Rubio, it's definitely Rubio that you have your eyes on. And, and that's the guy that you want on the 2024 Notre Dame roster. Yeah, you kind of open with something like uh, along the lines of this is Notre Dame doesn't want this. And it's like they 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 don't need like this, the scenario like they they need all the interior defense linemen bodies um, uh, for the reasons yeah. you just laid out. Uh, last but certainly not least is uh, the spring game date. We do have this just in case uh, you guys missed it. It's April 20th will be the blue gold game. Uh, yeah, set for April 20th. Uh, I think you can purchase tickets at this link that uh, the Notre Dame football Twitter account posted. It'll be on good old Peacock. So uh, it'll be fun, you know, reminding folks leading up to April 20th uh, about that. So 1 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, it'll be a really interesting uh, game, of course. will be one of those where it's like you, you don't want to take too much from it, but you can't take away nothing somewhere in the middle. Uh, but it'll, it'll still be interesting to see uh, Riley Leonard and, and Steve Angeli dueled out a little bit. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. You go back to last year, I believe this game was around the same weekend, like the penultimate weekend in April. And by the way, there's two things on that. I think I've, I've only covered two of these now. I think this is going to be my third. One of them, it was like sunny in 80, 85. Last year, snow flurries, bring your jacket. You don't want to be out there for two hours type of game. But then getting back to what you said, it, it's the quarterbacks for me. You have to put Riley Leonard as the quarterback on one of these teams and Steve Angeli as the quarterback on the other. Because remember what happened last year, Mike? That was the final nail in Tyler Buckner's coffin as a football player at Notre Dame. Sam Hartman looked amazing, uh, almost flawless in that game. And again, it's the spring games. You can't take everything away from it. But one guy was really great, and that was Sam Hartman. And Tyler Buckner did not look the part. He ends up transferring out of the program. So I don't think that's going to happen with Steve Angeli. I expect some good things out of him throughout spring brawl and into that game. But once you get to that game, it's going to be, hey, Riley Leonard versus Steve Angeli. So that's that's kind of exciting. That's something that Notre Dame fans have to look forward to this spring. Of course, you'll get to see CJ Carr and Kenny Minchie too. So, uh, yeah, very much looking forward to that as well as just kind of all the spring practice coverage. Um, I believe spring practice, we don't have an official date yet, but if history is any indication, it'll be like mid-March. Um, I believe, yeah, so somewhere around there. But of course, we will update you guys on that at blueandgold.com and right here on our YouTube channel. So, folks, please hit the thumbs up on this uh, video if you've not done so yet. Subscribe to the channel if you if you have uh, if you are new here. And uh, yeah, blueandgold.com is your home for Notre Dame football and recruiting coverage. Thank you all for watching this video, and as always, we will catch you next time.